Okay, we're back on the, the uh, Cartier. We're talking about Cartier, Jacques Cartier, um, and his his explorations to Canada in 1534. So Cartier landed in at Gaspe in 13 or 1534. Now this is the French flag here. Um, this is what it looks like today, but back when he was traveling, it looked more like this. So just so you know that the fleur de lis. Um, was their symbol, and you can still see it actually in French culture today, especially in New Orleans and stuff like that. So when we go, Gaspé starts right about here, and there's a provincial park. There's not much else, but there's a provincial park showing where he landed. Um, of course, he came in through when he was searching, and he caught off right here on the south side of the St. Lawrence River. Um, just, you know, Nova Scotia's over here, Maine, and then this is the St. Lawrence. So when he was there, he uh, he met the Haudenosaunee, and they helped him quite a bit, actually. They they were, were fantastic people. During the winter when they were staying there, he ran into some problems that all, most sailors ran into at the time, which was scurvy. Now, you couldn't bring enough citrus fruits, such as lemons and limes and melons and oranges and 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 things that contain vitamin C that would prevent scurvy. Now, scurvy is a, a horrendous disease where if you don't have enough vitamin C, your your gums actually start to your your gums start to loosen. Actually, they start to get in really inflamed, and your tongue starts to get really big. And you might have had this if you've just eaten a lot of candy or if you've eaten a lot of you know something like that. But you can still get scurvy today. Uh, so it's scurvy is a disease, and it's caused by not having enough vitamin C. It's treated by giving the patient vitamin C, but if they didn't get enough vitamin C, they might have died. Now, the symptoms normally begin three months after a person uh, stops having vitamin C, but it, you think at the time it would take about a month and a half to sail from France all the way across the ocean and and right to Canada so if you're going to do any type of exploring or getting to know the people then it would you would of course suffer from these these symptoms at the end of of your trip now if you were going to stay for much longer you would you would suffer for them a month and a half into as soon as you arrived here but again if you could get oranges or mel mel melons or tangerines or what, different types of fruit that with vitamin C you'd be okay uh, the Haudenosaunee actually told Cartier they they showed him a tea that he could make so he could drink that and they would give that would that would uh, fight the the onset of scurvy during the winter and then they would invite him back where they had fruit fruits trees at at his camp. Now this is an aside but it's a funny story where you all should really know that if if you when you move out on your own and you start to cook for yourself it's a trying times and if, if you don't like vegetables or fruits like me and my brother did my brother especially then uh, scurvy is a very real possibility now he would have uh, ichiban which is which is two pieces of bread with the noodles of ichiban boiled and and the uh, the seasoning put on it but the soup drained and then he would put that between two pieces of bread and he would eat that so um, it was not a very healthy diet. He would wake up and have eggs and bacon, and then he would, you know, do what boys do when they were, when they're 23. He would eat pizza and he would not eat healthy. So after uh, two or three months, he started to, or sorry, a month and a half, about a month and a half, two months, he would have vicious, vicious nightmares, and his tongue, he would start to speak really poorly because his tongue was actually <laughs> becoming swollen in his head. So uh, my mom kind of slapped him. And said, when was the last time you had a piece of fruit? And he thought to himself, like, oh, oh, this wasn't just a wives' tale you told us growing up because you wanted us to eat fruit. This actually hurts your mouth. And it's it. So so remember, kids, have your fruit and don't don't be like my brother and, and get scurvy. Well, you're not living on a boat because you're a pirate. So don't be a pirate and don't get scurvy. Um, so in 1534, Jacques or uh, Cartier takes Donaconis two sons. But he returns him. So when he meets the First Nations, he meets the Haudenosaunee, he, he meets a tribe, and Don, Donnacona is the chief. So after getting to know them, he needs proof that there are people living in North America. So he takes the, the chief's two sons and promises to return them next time he sees them, or, which is in the next year. So he takes them back to France and convinces the king to fund the next 
trip that he can take the next year. So he returns with him in 1535. So this is when Don uh, Cartier started to get scurvy, and Don Acona actually um, told him about all these fruit, all this fruit and riches. There's minerals and, and metals and stuff like that that he could um, that ha that was around his camp. So he decided to take Don Acona and nine other people and actually kidnap them and take them back to France. He didn't return again until 1542. Now he he kidnapped Don Acona because he wanted to prove to the king that there were goods there worth going back for. So he wanted to go back for a third time and, and convince the king to, to fund this. But the king didn't get around to funding it and didn't convince him until 1542, which is seven years later. So he returns, and Don Acona, because he's not used to European uh, viruses and flus, there was there was ten people that were taken, and only one of them were, remains. And so he didn't want to take that person back and, and tell everybody that nine people died back in France. So he went back to the Haudenosaunee and and told them that they were living a, a very fine life over in France and, and that they this they just didn't want to come back. Well, of course, the Haudenosaunee didn't believe this. So this starts the, the mistrust and, and the end of the friendship between the French and the Haudenosaunee. So the f king of France decides that Canada is much, much, much too far away, like way too far away, way too far. So he doesn't want to spend a lot of money pumping... Um, money in Canada to try to develop it. Now, monop a monopoly is a guarantee that one company will be the only company that has those rights in that area. So he would give different people di uh, monopolies, different traders monopolies, and say, if you, if you colonize it, you can have anything that you can get there. If it's gold, if it's silver, if it's furs, if it's woods, whatever you get, you can have and you can keep all the profit, but you have to settle it in the name of France. So he started to hand out monopolies because Canada was much, much, much too far away. Well, one of the person people that get the monopoly is Pierre Dumont and Samuel de Champlain. Now, Dumont was in charge of the the settlement and Samuel de Champlain was in charge of mapping it and finding out what else was out there. So he was the explorer and he's he's actually he started Quebec and that's why he's more well known than Pierre Dumont. But both of them were granted a monopoly from the king. They founded Acadia in Nova Scotia. Now, if we scroll down, Acadia is in right down here in Nova Scotia. It was actually Port Royal is what they called it, Port Royal, which is French for Point Port Royal. So Samuel de Champlain kept on searching. Well, all the fur trade was was happening in here. All the good furs was coming in here because it was colder, and there were more animals in there. Well, of course, cold cold animal cold weather, sorry, creates thicker furs for these animals. So the thicker the fur, the better the fur becomes, and it's it's more valuable. So Champlain decided that instead of staying here and trying to trying to trade from here and ship through here. He decided he was going to start a settlement in Quebec City. He actually started Fort Quebec. He started this in 1608. Champlain founded Fort Quebec in 1608. Let me say this again. Champlain founded Fort Quebec in 1608. Uh, uh, um, hint, hint. Because it was closer to the interior, which is where the furs were coming in from. So at this point, they... The France realized that the furs that came out of Canada were more valuable than the wood. But initially, they traded, they wanted to go to Canada because of the wood, not because of the fur. But eventually, the furs won out, and that was the most important part. So, if you go back to the, the map, they, there's not a major way for the boats to get in and out. So, they had to rely on little uh, canoes to go in and out of Quebec City, and for the, the French... To come to them so instead of waiting for sorry the first nations to come to them so instead of waiting for the first nations to come to them champlain um decided to use Cour de bois which is a runner of the wood and a voyageur to go and get the furs from the first nations deep within the interior now these voyageurs and Cour de bois would trade in between and for this class voyageur and Cour de bois all you need to know is that they're very similar people. They went into the interior. To, they were French people that went into the interior 
to trade with the First Nations. Now again, voyageurs and Cour de Bois were traders, French traders that went to trade with the First Nations. Now these relationships, because they would be in there and they would live with the First Nations and they would hang out with the First Nations, they would start to speak. And you can see that these First Nations and the French over here, and they would start to, uh, you know, get into relationships. And relationships, when they're really tight, lead to uh, babies. So these babies were half First Nations and half French. And of course, they weren't the French did not were not happy about this because they were they were half savages and the First Nations were not happy about this because they were you know ignoring their own kind so this baby was not welcome and these people were not welcome within their tribe all the time this is the creation of the Métis now the Métis is half First Nations half French or um, a combination of French and for European and First Nation so these people started to make a different type of First Nations, which was the Métis. Now, they're different than the Voyageur because the Métis are First Nations people. They weren't dealt with from the trade of the fur, but they did become from the trade of the fur. So, if, without the fur trade, there would be no Métis, but they didn't, they didn't always take part in the fur trade. Now, another reason, going back to the Haudenosaunee and hating the French, um, the Haudenosaunee, when Champlain arrived at Quebec, he fought with the Anishinaabe against the Haudenosaunee. So he took his gun, and to convince the Anishinaabe that he was a good, trustworthy trade partner, he went interior and he went to go fight the Anishinaabe, or sorry, the Haudenosaunee with the Anishinaabe. So he took his gun and, and whatever ammunition he had on a boat ride, and then they went, and they called it a boomstick because it made such a loud noise that when he fired it, it would go boom! And the first fire just kind of shocked everybody, the first first shot, but it didn't hit anybody, so they weren't that scared. And then the second one actually hit the chief, and the third one hit somebody else. So these people were very wounded because, you, you know, a bullet, they, they were shocked. So the Haudenosaunee actually retreated from that fight, and that began the uh, strong relationship with the Anishinaabe and the French. And it actually alienated the Haudenosaunee from the French, that, that fight. Um, kind of finalized the, the, the relationships between the French and the English. Or, sorry, the French and the, the First Nations. So, uh, yeah, there you go. That's a 12-minute video, 13-minute video.